All right, so today we got a bit of a long one, um, but let's just build this lectern for my dad. Hey, my name is Joe. Welcome to Shepherd's Workbench. So we're going to get started with this beautiful piece of spalted ash. We're going to plane it down um, just to get it dimensional and so it's the even thickness on both sides. Using the track saw, we're going to cut the top at a 20 degree angle. This is where the top of the lectern will actually sit. Then we're going to take it to the joiner and make sure we get a um, 90 degree perfect square corner. Uh, once we have that jointed edge, we'll go over to the table saw and we'll rip it down to its final width, cleaning up that one edge there. All right, guys, so let me catch let me catch you up a little bit. So this is gonna be the center stretcher for our podium. Um, it's a beautiful piece of spalted ash. See like the coloring in there from all that fungus. Um, and it's gorgeous. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful piece. So what we're gonna do, um, we planed it down, we joined it, we ripped it on a table saw, um, but I left it long on purpose. So. We want the final height to be at about 44 inches. That's pretty comfortable. That's what I've compared it to. Um, and we've got a 20 degree angle right here. This is where this is gonna set our bevel for our top, which we're gonna make out of some really nice black walnut. Um, but here's the thing. Since I left it long, I thought, you know what? I'll just cut off a square end on that side and it'd be great. But here's the problem. This side is great, but there's none of this spalting color on the top. So I'm gonna have to recut this 20 degree angle. Not ideal, but um, I'm gonna wait and do that until I find out how thick our base is and how thick our top is. But we just have to know, we have to cut this side so that we can keep that spalting color. Um, and here's the thing about spalting. Um, so I have done a lot of research to try to figure out what I can do about that. If it's structurally sound, if I can use it for its center stretcher, the support beam. And there's a lot of mixed things. One, I know that this board has been air dried for a year and then till 20% moisture content and then it's kiln dried till 10% moisture content. I know that. So I know that there's not enough moisture in this piece to continue the fungus from growing. However, it does need to be hardened. Now there's no punky wood on this side, which basically means like it's decayed to where it's like a cork material. Um, I know that there's no punky wood on here. I've cut out a huge chunk that does have that punky wood. Um, so, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use hardener anyway. Um, we're gonna put, it's, it's real thin. It goes on in a couple coats. You'll see me do it here in a minute, but we'll do probably three coats of it um, and then let that dry and we'll probably do it over the whole piece so it doesn't change the color of it in any way or if it does it's uniform throughout the whole piece but I'm gonna wait until we get our final measurements and our, we finally cut it down before I do the hardener just so that we're ready for finish so now that we got our center stretcher built let's mill up some black walnut and uh, we'll get our base and our top built we're gonna start by using the track saw to cut off three equal pieces that will make up our base. Okay, so now we got all of our base pieces rough cut and kind of milled. This piece is the only piece that's kind of got a rough low spot. So this is gonna be our top piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take our stand, like our like our spine of the lectern, and I'm going to cut a hole in just this top layer. We're going to have three layers on the bottom, but I want to cut a kind of a dado for that to set in, and I want it to be super tight, and I want it to be super strong. So rather than gluing all the pieces up, then trying to chisel it out and get it to the certain depth that I want, I'm going to mark it out here. I'm gonna cut the hole and I'm gonna make it so it's a super tight fit. Then I'm gonna glue up all the pieces in the, for the base. Then our, our dado's are already cut. So let's go map it out. As we're cutting out this little mortise, I made sure to set the, the blade saw height 
to the same thickness as our spine. All right, so here's what we did. We just rabbited out this piece. Now this is our mortise for our spine. And all of these three pieces of walnut, and all these pieces of walnut are gonna get glued together and this will be where that spine slots in. It's a real thick, heavy base and I want it that way. Um, so we're gonna glue this joint here. We'll fill it in with some walnut wood filler after we sand it all and stuff like that. So we're gonna sand all of these pieces because it's got a lot of chalk and stuff on it so we get a better glue surface. And then we're gonna glue them up and uh, let it sit. On big glue ups like this, I like to use this little trowel. It's an extra one I had. I was kind of junky and rusty, but it just it's great for spreading out glue for big glue ups like this. Now that we got our base out of clamps, we're gonna take it over the table saw and we're gonna clean up all of the edges just to make sure all of the edges are flush and square to each other. This also helps to get rid of a lot of that glue squeeze out. So here we're just kind of test fitting our spine to make sure it goes in and it's tight, but it goes in. You can see I'm just checking for square here. I want to make sure it sits at a 90 degree angle in the mortise. Um, but we're also, I'm going to describe a line here because we're going to put trim on the front and back edge. Um, and I want to make sure I don't put the trim that interferes with it going all the way in the mortise. So I take my base and I set it between my fence and my blade to rip strips that are the exact width of the base. Now I take out my picture frame jig here to get perfect miters. Fisher Shop and uh, David Picciuto from Make Something both have great videos on this jig. So if you want to make one for yourself, I suggest you check out those videos. Um, but we're going to cut each of these border pieces to size so those miters are tight with no gaps. And uh, they're cut to size and they fit perfect. Then we're going to glue it all up and make sure it's really well clamped here. Once it's clamped and glued up and we get it out, we're gonna take a hand plane and flush it up to the bottom of the base and make sure that it's just really smooth. We wanna get the hand plane within about a 16th of an inch or so so that we can sand it the rest of the way to make sure it gets perfectly flush. All right, so this top is gonna be in two layers. The boards I have are only 12 inches wide, so I cut this little filler strip here to make up the extra distance, and then I'm going to cut it off later. We're going to glue this in two stages. We're going to cut glue the bottom layer and then the top layer because if this is the front, as in the person is standing right here, we're going to have a groove right here, so there's going to be a thinner strip here with about a 3 8 inch strip that's going to have a beveled cut so an iPad can sit in the groove. And when you're looking at it, it's looking, or you can see the screen, and it's not like tipped too far forward or too far back. So since I know that the top like, spine is a 20 degree cut, I cut two little spacers at 20 degrees so I can set this piece on there and figure out what angle I need that to be at. So let's try it out. Okay, so now remember, this is still at 20 degrees. So when we met, made our mark here, we gotta figure out what that angle is. So I just put my little get, gauge here on the face and slide it so I can see where that angle is. And it's at 50, 55 degrees. Well, you know what I mean, 55 degrees. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna cut that angle on this side here to all along this, this board here. We'll cut another board similar to this and run that angle on this side, but it'll be flipped over. So once we cut those angles, I can figure out how wide of a bottom piece I need, cut that angle. Then order of operations here. So 
before we glue this up with biscuits and things like that, I think I want to do the same thing that I did with the base. And I want to cut out a notch in here for that spine to come all the way through. I want it also to be hidden by the top here. So I want this piece that gets glued up here to, for the spine to be all the way up here. So it's completely hidden by this piece being glued in and you can't see it down the little, the little slot for the iPad. And I think it's gonna be easiest to cut that spot out while this is still apart. Then I can do that on the bandsaw and not have to worry about doing a huge like cut with the table saw like we did on the base. Um, but I think it'll be a lot easier to do it that way. So once we get that, we'll biscuit this together um, I think I might need to run this through a thickness planer because um, I think this piece is a little thicker than this piece. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that, get these figured out and get it all starting to glue up. We're going to set our bevel to 55 degrees and get that, uh, cut, that groove cut out. I'm going to cut my biscuits in before I cut the mortise out for the top just so I can make sure all the biscuits are in the right location. So, all right, so here's what's happening. I went to cut this piece out and I was going to do it on the bandsaw, but here to here is too wide. So I had to cut it by hand with my pull saw. Not fun. The other thing I realized after I cut this is this is going to be on an angle, which means this hole needs to have a slope in it. So I measured based upon the, the degree of the angle, basically math. There is a, the top of the ridge is going to be 5 sixteenths from the bottom. So I need to get this line connected to the bottom edge and that should be our 20 degree angle. So let's get the chisel in. Now that our mortise is cut, we're gonna trim it down so it's perfectly in the center of our board. With that board on there now, it doesn't fit in my planer. So I had to hand plane it in order to get it to be flush. With our angle cut, we're gonna make sure that the angle is going to be square to the bottom board, and we're gonna put our piece in there and scribe a line. Now I want there to be a half inch gap in that groove. Normal iPads, three eighths of an inch, but I wanted to account for a case, so I just made it a half inch wide. So we'll get that scribed line, we'll back it off a half inch and cut off the extra to fit that slot in there. Now that it's out of clamps, we're gonna cut off the excess and make it sure it's square and get all the rid of that glue squeeze out. And just like we did on the base, we're gonna cut all of our trim pieces out of ash and uh, I did that with my picture frame jig. Then we're gonna glue it up and uh, put it in clamps to squeeze all those miters tight. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys a quick little trick here. When I was planing down these edges, you see those like gouges in there? I'm gonna show you uh, how to get that. I'm not sure if that was just cause I tweaked the plane a little bit or what, um, but I'm gonna show you how to get rid of them. All you need is a simple piece of cloth. This is specifically used for this purpose and no other purpose. What I do is I just take the cloth like that and you take a household iron. Um, this is one that I keep in my shop so we don't use the one that's from the house. So I'm just gonna get this nice and wet. Whoop. Didn't mean to get all that water out there. All right, so now we just take our cloth that's damp and you kind of just 
press the iron into it, it steams those fibers and they begin to expand. You don't want to stay too long on one spot because you don't want it to burn. Alright, they're starting to come out here. I'll show you guys a close up here in just a second. Now, they're not noticeable enough to where you can you see them, but they'll sand out. So um, I got it enough where the fibers raised enough to where I could sand it back and it'll be perfectly smooth. Now these are gonna be the trim pieces that go on the front and the back of the spine. I set my dado blade to be just under the width of the spine so I can sneak up on that cut and make sure it's a really tight fit. So this cross is gonna be a little accent piece on the front. So we're, I took my angle grinder, cut a half lap so they slot together, and we'll put some flux and solder them together. <laughs> that looks pretty ugly, but uh, we'll clean it up with some files. Now we're going to add the trim. I just put a lot of glue in the dados and kind of hammered it on there because again I wanted it to be a really tight fit. And uh, I didn't record it, but I took my bandsaw to cut a very small slit for that cross to fit in and to keep it perfectly square. And I just put some five minute epoxy to hold it in there. All right, we're all in clamps. I'm squeezing on either side of the cross so that epoxy can bond the inside of it. I hope it turns out. We'll uh, find out in the morning, I guess. Hey guys, so I was recording the section where I made the cup holder. You'll see it in the final product, but the footage wasn't great. You really couldn't see what I was doing, so I want to take a second to explain what I did. I started off by buying a Craftsman cup holder, the ones that magnetize to the side of a toolbox, um, and I used that as my base. I colored it in like a vintage gold colored spray paint, but then what I did is I took a piece of walnut right here and I cut the 20 degree angle on the bottom here the 55 degree angles on the top here and then flush it up with that little ridge where the iPad goes. I wanted the cup holder to be removable and movable to either side. I took a piece of brass and I secured it to the top and I took another piece that extends all the way down and bends over that front lip to hold the cup straight up and down. <clears throat> I took the magnets off of the Craftsman cup holder and screwed it to the bottom of this brass plate. But I realized when you couldn't really lift the cup holder out unless there was a hinge point. So I attached a hinge right here where the block met this longer piece of brass so you can lift it up and pull it straight up. Um, and that's how I did it. Sorry I didn't get any good footage of it. I tried soldering the hinges to the brass and it just didn't work. It ended up fusing the hinge. So I did have to use screws, which is why I threaded this brass piece up here and down here and then um, used epoxy to secure that hinge down on top of having those screws. So it's really never going to give way, but it gives a good base that holds the cup um, securely, but also keeps it well secured to the actual podium. So when you see it in the final product, that's how I made it. So now we're sanding to prep all of the surfaces for the hardener. I wanted to make sure I got it nice and smooth before I put the hardener on because that stuff does not sand well and it runs through paper like crazy. So I started with an 80 grit, worked up to 120, and then we put on our Midwax wood hardener. This just stabilizes the wood and makes it stronger in case there was any sort of um, decomposing wood in the center to strengthen it up. And like I said before, um, I put it on all of the surfaces in case there was a change in color. I didn't want it to show up and finish. For finish, we put on two coats of water-based polyurethane.
That's what I made. What? The podium. You made that? Yeah. What did you do? This is what I made. John said he got a bunch of people from the church got together and bought this from me, and I made it. Cool. But it's a slot, so you can put your iPad in here and papers up here. Nice. Wow. That is cool. What is that? Oh I didn't God. notice it either. I'm thinking, who brought well, that? Had that is wow, so that cool. That is cool. Because Dad wanted a cup holder. Yes. Well, guys, thank you for checking out this project. If you like this video, uh, click the like button. Uh, if you want to see more projects like this, subscribe and hit the little bell notification so you can get more uh, projects when I post them. Thanks for joining us on Shepherd's Workbench.